Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum using on-chain analysis. Specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at the market value to realize value Z-score, or the MVRV Z-score for short. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. The typical disclaimer that on-chain data could be manipulated, so please, Take it for what you will. I don't think it provides all the answers, but it could at least help provide some insight into what's going on in the markets. Now, one of the things we should talk about is what is the definition of the MVRV Z-score? Well, we have it right here. The MVRV Z-score is equal to the market cap minus the realized cap, divided by the standard deviation of the market cap. Now, dividing it by the standard deviation of the market cap does a, this helps us account for diminishing returns in, in some manner, okay? so. In this instance, uh, or in, just in general, it compares the market cap and realized value in order to assess when the market is either overvalued or undervalued. The standard deviation pulls out the extremes in data between market value and realized value and accounts for diminishing returns. More formally, the Z-score is a number that reflects how many standard deviations the market is different from the realized value at any given time. What are some things we can take away from this metric? Well, one of the things is that any time, by the way, the, the value, the cap, the, the, the capitalization, whether it's the market cap or the realized cap, this is on the primary y-axis over here, a logarithmic scale. The secondary y-axis is the MVRV z-score on a, on a linear scale. One of the things we can note, though, is we can quickly see that any time this, you know, this, this line here goes below zero, then you can see that, that this is, um, uh, the, the market cap is actually going below the realized cap. Okay, so... And that in, in, in this instance, what we want to really look for is, is not necessarily, you know, can it be useful for helping us come out of downtrends, because I'm not really sure that it can be, but can it be useful for identifying major mania phases? That's really what we want to do, right? I mean, that, that's the, the name of the game is to identify these mania phases. And one of the things, if we, if we were to just draw a line, what can we say if it's above four? If it goes above four, we're getting pretty heated. It doesn't mean we can't go higher, right? It doesn't mean we can't go higher. We went higher. I mean, we came up to four here. We cooled off for a little bit, and then we moved higher. And then also we came back up to four over here. But what it typically means is that if it's if it's four or higher, we are we are the 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 market is getting relatively heated. Okay, we saw that happen a number of times over here. I mean, it, it hit it here. So the point is 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 don't I, I, it doesn't mean necessarily sell all your ETH. But you should you should start to be cautious when it gets up into into this into this range over here. And then additionally, it hit above four back at the back of the peak in in early 2018. Again, it hit above four at the you know the 20 the 2021 May local top. It did not go above four in November. So one of the things that I think this shows is that again, from an on-chain perspective. The, the, the peak for not only Ethereum, but also for, for, for Bitcoin was more important earlier in 2021 than it was later in 2021. We've seen that a number of things. We've also seen it with the RSI, like the weekly RSI. We were much further extended in early 2021 than we were in late 2021. You can also see it from a lot of on-chain data as well as social metrics that we've, that we've tracked. So I think that you know the, some, a metric like this can probably be most useful for helping identify, you know, when do we need to calm down some? And if you guys remember back to, to May, I, I put out a couple of videos on Ethereum saying, look guys, we need to have some summer lull. We're not, we're not just gonna go straight to $10,000 right now. We need to go down for a while. And, and we did, and I wasn't following this chart back then, but this would have told you the same thing, right? This would have told you the same exact thing when it hit up here at four, it would have said, hey guys, we need to cool it off a little bit, all right? And we have cooled it off some. So then the question becomes, well, you know, this they're both in a downtrend right now. Do note that at one point we did the market cap did go below the realized cap back in, in late 2016. It did not stop us from moving higher. So if even if it goes below it, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, but one of the things that that you should be aware of is if we come into a range like this where we're below zero, that's going to be probably the most boring time in the market that you could ever imagine. But that would really be the time that you're going to get the most, you know, the most out of your money. I have no idea when it's going to go there. It could go there next month. It might, go, it might not go there for two years. The point is, is whenever it does go there, that's typically the time 
to, if history is an indication, not financial advice, but if history is an indication, that is the time to, to really be uh, establishing larger positions. Um, but right now, you know, we are still we are still somewhat extended. Doesn't mean it can't stay that way for, for quite a bit longer. And, and I think one of the things to look out for is if it, you know, if Ethereum does bounce either here, if it bounces at 2K or, or 1700 or wherever it does, if it does bounce, and we, we go into another another phase where the market is bullish again, perhaps this is one more metric you can add to your to your toolkit to try to identify, you know, is it time to, you know, to consider that the market is a bit overheated and needs to come back down for, for a while. So again, if you guys want access to this chart as well as a number of other charts, we have all sorts of charts. Check out into the cryptoverse.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.